So we're going to do a worked example of how to conduct a one sample hypothesis test in the TI calculator, TI-84 calculator. And so we have this problem. Our biologist was interested in determining whether some substance uh, resulted in a lower average height for seedlings. Uh, the standard height of seedlings is 15.7 centimeters. Um, this is an odd way of referring to the mean, but this is essentially what he's referring to here. Uh, and the biologist created a random sample of 33 seedlings, which are shown below. And so what we want to do is we want to, working from this data, we want to conduct this hypothesis test. So the first thing that we need to determine is that this is a one sample t-test of means. So we're going to um, let the technology calculate the mean of this sample, and then we're going to determine if that is sufficiently different from the regular data, the 15.7 centimeters, to see if um, that's a meaningful difference or not. So we're going to stick with the t-test because we don't have population data, and even though n equals 33 is a fairly large sample for, we could conceivably use a z-test, um, it's still a little bit better. It accounts for, the t-test the will account for estimating from an estimate a little bit better um, because we don't have the population data. So we're going to go ahead and set up our null and alternative hypotheses. So the null hypothesis is that this, this Avinca minor root actually did nothing uh, in terms of the growth, so that the mean is actually still 15.7 centimeters. And the alternative is that the mean is less than 15.7 centimeters because this is what he wants to establish. He believes, this biologist believes that the this extract is going to result in a lower average height. So that's what he wants to prove. Okay, so once we've set this up, then we're going to go to our TI calculator and we're going to enter the data. Now, I've already entered the data. If you go to stat, and select edit, you can enter the data in your list here. And I've already entered the data. So quit. We go back to stat and we scroll over to tests. We're going to select t-test. This is the one sample t-test. Um, now we can um, do our tests from stats or data. So if we just have with summary data, we've already calculated the mean and the standard deviation, we can select stats. But here we have the raw data entered, so we're going to select data. Our mean is 15.7, so this is the mu naught is the mean of the null hypothesis. Uh, our data is in list 1. There's no frequency information, each one of our values in our list is used only one time. And then we want to conduct the less than case, so that's already highlighted. And to start with, I'm going to go to the draw option, just so that we can see a graph of the data. And I'm going to hit enter. And so what this is going to do is in the TI, it's going to graph our normal distribution for us. And if our um, test statistic turns out to be something between 0 and 3, we'll actually see the shaded region on our graph. In this case, our t-test is almost negative 4.6. So it's way over here. So we can't actually see the rejection region. Now, one thing to keep in mind is that um, if the problem doesn't say Um, what the significance level is. Generally assume that alpha is 0 0.05. So this makes the calculating of the rejection region, if you're using the rejection region method, a little bit simpler. And if you're using the rejection region method, um, you're probably also going to be conducting the z-test because you'll have remembered uh, what this value is for a one-tailed test, it's um, approximately 
approximately um, 1.64, I think, uh, for a one-tailed test. For a two-tailed test, it would be negative uh, 1.96. But for a two-tailed test, this uh, and a less than, this would be negative 1.64. Uh, our program did give us a p-value, approximate p-value, and the t-test. So really, even with the graphing stuff, on this calculator, you have sort of the crucial information you need to do this uh, analysis. But I want to actually go back and I want to do the calculate version uh, just so that you can see a little bit more information of what the calculator actually is calculating. You select calculate. And so when you select the calculate option, you get a slightly more accurate estimate for the p value. You do get the same t-test value that was analyzed before. Your alternative hypothesis is up here. Your x-bar is calculated for you. So this is the, the mean of your sample. And this is your sample standard deviation. And so it gives you some of this information that you could go and then use this to calculate by hand if you wanted to and sort of confirm what some of these values are. But you see this p-value here. Don't forget about this e to the negative 5, because remember, this uh, this is scientific notation. And so this value is very small. So that's why our on our graphing version, the p-value is estimated to be 0. This is a value which is less than 0 0.05, which is our significance level. And therefore, we can reject the null hypothesis. There is sufficient information to believe that this extract does, in fact, reduce the height of our sunflower plants.